Hello dear friends, welcome to Shiksha Mantra once again and today we are going to discuss the second part of our sentence diagramming. Yes dear friends, just uh, in our previous video we have discussed about simple sentence diagramming. How do we handle things? Those are very simple with very simple structures and very simple words. But now on things are going to get changed. Yes, dear friends, here I would say that uh, things are going to get complicated. Or here we'd face some complex rules regarding sentence diagramming. Rather, I would say there the simple diagramming, for the simple diagrammings, only the simplicity would get a bit less. Yes, there would be a decrease in the simplicity of the sentences and you'd start learning the second part of our learning of English sentence diagramming. So let's begin. So here we have the four types of sentences or the four rules with which we may diagram a sentence. And what is this? It reads compound predicate. So far we were working with simple predicates. But now the predicate might get a compound one. So how it works? Why do we consider it as a compound predicate? We we'll discuss it here in this sentence, but read the sentence first. The sentence says the cat howled and scratched ferociously. So here we get the subject, the cat and the verb howled and scratched. Now, if you follow this, you would get this and. Two verbs are here in the predicate part, which gets connected with and. And this is why we are saying that this is the predicate with some compoundness. It's a compound predicate. And then there comes ferociously. So here we would learn how to set them in the skeleton and how to diagram this sentence. Yes, dear friends, it's very simple. We have cat as the subject, so we put it here. There's the cat, so the is placed here, uh, suggesting that the cat, this is the main subject which gets the and it forms the subject of the sentence the cat. Then comes the predicate and here we have two different verbs, howled and scratched. So here these two verbs are actually related to cat. That's why you'd put and here because they are connected with and. Yes, dear friends, this is how would show the compound property of the predicate. That's how would show how these two verbs get connected with a conjunction. That's the rules of diagramming. This is how would show the different uh, conjunctions, be it uh, coordinate or subordinate. The connectors would be shown like this. So, the cat howled and scratched how ferociously. We'd put it there down because it's directly related with the verbs. So, this adverb is connected to the verbs. And logically, we have found out the predicate of the sentence and how it is connected with the subject. So both the subject part and the predicate part of the sentence is found out with its logic because as I have said, each and every sentence is logically connected. Only you'd have to find out the logic and you can place it into a diagram like this. So this is the fourth types we have learned. Now we we'll proceed to the fifth one. So let's go. So here we are with the fifth set of rules. What does it read? Compound subject and compound predicate. So here in this sentence, we get compound subject and compound predicate. Just think of the last rules. What we got there? 
there we got a simple subject and a compound predicate. Here we'd get a compound subject and a compound predicate. I've told you now, things aren't going to get complicated. Only it, they, they, there would be a decrease in the simplicity of the sentences and the simplicity of the diagrams. So gradually things are losing their simplicity. Here we get both a compound subject and a compound predicate. And I know you can do it very easily if you follow what I have shown in the last diagram. So let's check out what would be the diagram for this sentence. So what we'd get if this sentence is read. Read this sentence first. Rajat and Rani walked hard and then rested. So what we have here in the subject, in the subject we have two components, Rajat and Rani. So two proper nouns are there and they are also interconnected. So I have put it like this, Rajat, Rani and they are connected with and and this for both these subjects these are the common subjects for the verb walked and the verb rested we have two different verbs now here and they are common walked and rested both the verbs are for rajot and rani both the subjects so here i have diagrammed it like this and this is the subject part because we have put it on the left of the barrier and after the barrier there is the predicate part on the right side of it. So Rajat and Rani walked and rested. There comes walked hard. Here it is written walked hard. So hard this adverb is connected to walk. So I have divided it from there walked hard and then rested so then it is connected to rested so here we have connected then with the rested so finally that's how the compound subject and the compound predicate can be presented in a diagram successfully following the logic with which it is composed so only i'm repeating this fact i'm hammering over this point for so very different times and in so very different occasions only because of one thing that you have to find out the logic in the sentence actually each and every sentence is produced with a logic you have to find out the logic and the logic would provide you the skeleton and you have to put only the components in the skeleton to get the sentence diagram it would be easy it would be very easy if you remember that everything is assembled logically and your task is to find out the logic and with this point would shift to what to our next rules that is the sixth rules for sentence diagramming so let's begin read the rules first the sixth rules three subjects and now you'd utter omg oh my god three subjects how would you diagram it it's not so tough believe me it's very very easy the factor which would make a difference here is your understanding of the logic used in this sentence so far we were discussing in the last point we were discussing about the compound subject and compound predicate there you have found two nouns and two verbs but what happens here here three subjects this is also compound na there is no difference just the same only there were two subjects and now here it get three subjects and what's about the predicate it's simple there's no complexity in the predicate so our focus would remain how to handle three subjects how to juggle with three subjects like an expert juggler while you are diagramming a sentence so find the sentence first roni raju and rivu are working so three subjects are there roni number one 
then Raju number two and then Rivu number three. So we have three subjects and they are set like this Roni, Raju and Rivu and this is conjugated with and. So Roni and Raju and Rivu that means Roni comma Raju and Rivu. So we have handled the compound subjects those three subjects together that's why I have said don't say oh my god three subjects it's not so much tough it's very easy only it's about finding out the logic used in this sentence so when you have found out the logic what's next then the predicate part and it's very common are working and this are working is applicable for both Rani and Raju and also Rivu so three three of them each and every one gets the same verb and the same predicate so this is the subject part of the sentence and this is the predicate part we have found out the logic we have made it we have juggled successfully three subjects and now I can assure you if there's five ten one hundred or one thousand subjects it doesn't matter you know how to do this you would write down everything and then put a slash and and with this you'd get the construction of the sentence you'd get the skeleton of the sentence you can diagram the sentence very easily so it doesn't matter anymore that's why i have told you that things aren't going to get complicated rather things are going to less complicated simple actually things are going to uh, get uh, complexity a bit mixed with simplicity so these are simple these aren't complex only you have to find out the logic behind this so this is how we could tell with the different sentences with compound subject and compound predicate so dear friends we have reached the goal we have set for our second part of the learning of sentence diagram here we have learned about dealing subjects and predicates but the subjects and predicates are compound not simple as we have learned in the part one so our goal is accomplished for the second part and now we'd have to shift to the third part to find out what's coming next what are the different types of skeleton would use and find out the logic in sentences and then diagram them in a very very interesting manner so for this you'd have to obviously subscribe this channel like this and share this with your friends and family and if you have subscribed obviously you have to press the bell icon to get the notifications so that every time i post a video you'd get notified for this and obviously you have the i button above to check the previous parts of uh, this series and in the description i would put the link for all the parts and also the link for my telegram channel and the link for my facebook channel so visit those channels stay tuned with us we are going to present very very unique ideas regarding english grammar in this channel only and that would be exclusive for you so just wait we are returning soon with the third part until then bye bye